board uh, ONF session. So I wanted, I didn't want to just do a whole bunch of slides and um, presentations and we're late in the day. But what I really wanted to focus some energies on um, is our ability to take some of the existing specs that uh, ourselves and other companies have submitted and has been approved and accepted through the OCP board um, to really kind of make it more into a project oriented um, endeavor going forward. So we have all these great specs. Uh, AT&T has done a great job on doing specs for Universal CPE, GPON, um, you know, Radisys has done a really good job on providing specs for, uh, you know, open rack 19 carrier grade. We've done the OCP sled and there's a, a tremendous amount of ecosystem players that are supplying not just specs, but support free hardware, free software um, into the industry. And what I wanted to talk about um, during this session is kind of some next steps. What are some things that we can do with the operators uh, to, to gain more uh, influence uh, using OCP as a common open architecture for certain products? You know, open, uh, open rack carrier grade 19 is one, but you know, things like universal CPE that is not just for AT&T, but for other resources as well to actually deploy. And I'm, everything's kind of thinned out because it is late in the day. Uh, I just wanted to get the teams not just support, but feedback on what are some of the next steps from the Telco working group we should really focus our energies on throughout this year and going into next year. Um, some of the challenges that are in place as well is a lot of the software stacks and open architectures that are now being um, included within the OCP form factor. And the question is, is how as we as a, a telco working group can work with the ONF team, with TIP and others through an ecosystem and have the carriers drive, what is it exactly that they need? What is it that we want to deploy from a project perspective not just adding more specs to the program, which are great, but let's take the specs that we have today and start a plan and a path to implement them to really see, you know, are all the things that we're telling the world working? You know, are all the key items that make this open frame rack system much better than this open rack system or this rack and stack environment and so forth? So Bill and I, you know, kind of talked about how do we kind of get that momentum going into this year, working with all of our carrier friends, and what are those next steps? Could we actually put in key representatives of those groups to set up projects, timelines, schedules, to really make this into a working environment? Um, so as I'm looking for my slides, any questions, comments on that? Or we all kind of agree or agree to disagree on some of these next steps with some of the programs? Or have I totally lost y'all? <laughs> uh, I think it's still going to be a little bit out of the box for us as far as the project kind of thing. I can't obviously bring everything together as far as the quality goes and what the solutions are there. That's just something that we want to do that for Awesome. And I know is feeling the same pain with Craig and uh, with the airframe system, which we're a supplier into as well. And uh, UCP programs, uh, you know, all the things that this great organization through OCP has actually done, now I think is a great time to start implementing. And, you know, tooting our horn, we've put a lot of great work, not just AD Link, but all the other companies that are involved with OCP I put in a tremendous amount of work to get the best product out there. And I think now is kind of the time to kind of get that momentum going. And what I wanted to get feedback from the audience, especially the carriers, the service providers, to say, well, you know, we want to do this in 2018. We want to do this in 2019, first quarter. Uh, you know, kind of make it into a project working group than just doing specs. And before I, uh, it's, it's pretty quiet, but before I leave, 
are there any questions about you know what is OCP carrier grade and why is it better than you know a rack and stack or a rack mount server or open 19 you know I can throw up some slides to show that but what's some of the feedback with the audience all right beer time is this beer time now <laughs> No, actually, it's more cost effective because the amount of um, uh, sockets that you can provide in a 2U form factor, the cost savings that you can have within the fiber in the back and the top of rack switching, uh, the cost is not dramatically more expensive. It's about the same. And the reason that we built OCP carrier grade um, is primarily for edge compute. Uh, it was put into place that as the central offices, as Timon was showing, the central offices are a great co-location to put, make that into a data center for their edge components. But if you went in and you put in normal OCP frames or normal, you know, something from Inspur or Quanta that is more for the data center, you're talking 21 inch frames, more deep, having to upgrade your distribution for power, the way even the cabling is done in these frames are so much different, which is why we developed the OCPCG to have the ease of use of wheeling in this uh, this 42U frame or even height frame and uh, powering it right up, ready to go. And especially with ONF and ONAP and uh, uh, some of the ONF stuff that's going on, it could be pre-configured based on what the, the requirements are from the uh, from the carrier itself, the service provider. Yeah, actually I actually have some slides. We can talk offline if you want, or, um, but cooling is, is critical to that, especially with the power distribution and the way that the specs have been written. Uh, we have the ability to support you know, up to four NVIDIA uh, V100 uh, PCI cards, which are super hot, super high power, 250 watts to 300 watts per PCI. And uh, with OCP form factor, we can support that. And the, the draw of the, the uh, fans, uh, the two specs that we've submitted is a push-pull uh, type airflow or just a push, depending on what's actually put into that pod or that sled itself. Um, also to, to kind of inform everyone, within the OCP carrier grade uh, ecosystem, um, it's not just one or two vendors, you know, we're talking a, a lot of vendors. We have Molex has played a good part with the blind mate connectors in the back. Uh, we have Radisys providing some of the initial specs and in the SI on how to take ONF and ONAP and uh, a cord onto a, a, an OCP form factor. Uh, Pentair, who, you know, their biggest DNA is really shelving and full rack systems. Now they're called Invent. Um, you know, their key focus going forward is, is supplying different components. They have DSP sleds, uh, they have CPU sleds, storage sleds, uh, both Skylake and Broadwell perspective. Um, AD Link, we have NVIDIA GPU sleds, we have CPU sleds. Uh, so there is a, a fairly significant ecosystem, including you know no Nokia's airframe system, uh, which uh, supports different types of CPUs and, and management systems. So uh, call to arms is what Bill and I were kind of really talking about and saying what are the next steps to deploy this gear, uh, either as a proof of concept and a real trial, um, or have a project plan to go live uh, within the next year. So any questions, comments? Rocky, did you have anything you wanted to add or? All right. Um, I think uh, before we end up, I think there's a five o'clock, uh, I guess, op not an open bar, it's pay for your own uh, uh, beer and liquor across the street, is that correct? The OCP group, so. Well, thank you guys. And uh, we'll see you for a few beers. <laughs>